Hey everybody, it's Alex once again from Remote Work Life. Hope you're doing hope you're doing well wherever you may be in the world today. And today I have with me uh, HR expert Victoria Bond, and Victoria happens to be also the CEO of Space HR. Now, Space HR are an employee engagement agency, supercharging business performance through engaged teams. Uh, they've built an employee engagement survey platform that works with WhatsApp, believe it or not. So I'm looking forward to learning more about that, uh, Victoria, and welcome and thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Lovely to see you. We've been having conversations via email um, on and off for the last couple of months, and we've both agreed that we don't necessarily like email, so we're all, all kind of I'm excited to hear a bit more about you, about your business, and about how you're using something a bit more um, instantaneous, I suppose you could say, and a bit more sort of practical to to really fulfill employee enga- engagement with all the different businesses that you're working with at the moment. So thank you for joining me. And as I usually do on the podcast, I usually start by asking my guest, my great guest, and Victoria is, is one of those. Um, so tell me, uh, Victoria, tell me about yourself, a bit about yourself and how you, uh, I guess, established Space HR and where you are now. Sure. So um, as I say, I am a HR uh, professional by background. I was um, HR director in um, kind of large corporates, and then I moved across into a scale-up uh, tech business, did some mergers and acquisitions role uh, roles, um, leading um, high volumes of, of acquisitions and doing the kind of the hearts and minds piece around employee engagement of newly acquired businesses. And um, during the first lockdown, feels like a lifetime ago now, but um, during the first lockdown, um, I uh, was off having my second baby on my turn to leave and had one of those oh my goodness, life's just too short. Um, I'm going to follow my dreams and um, and set up Space HR and go and do the work that I love, which is employee engagement for more than one business, I guess. Um, and you know, that, that's what I do now. I help numerous clients, numerous businesses improve performance through employee engagement. You're fully remote now. Is, is that something that's always been part, part of your way of working? Yeah, so do you know, I got in, I got in, um, I went to go to a client site uh, last week and I've got two small children and I had to be somewhere at a very specific time. I had to do the journey um, that was like an hour and a half long or whatever. And the additional pressure of, I've got to be somewhere and I've got to get my kids out and I've got to, you know, speed up the routine, et cetera. Um, and it, you know, it's not all, it's not all about that, is it? But, um, uh, you know, the, re- the remote thing for, for us, when we set up the business, it was just kind of a, a no brainer for us. We were like, why, why wouldn't we? Um, because the number of different talented people that have come together, it isn't just me in this organization. They had no interest in, in not working remotely either. Uh, so you know, let's let's do let's work remote first and and keep doing that until it doesn't make sense to do otherwise. I guess. Yeah, and it's all about making sense, isn't it? Because I'm also a parent myself. I've got three kids of my own, and I think um, it's not just about if you can't, yeah having kids and working remotely is is a is a huge advantage, isn't it? Um, but at the same time, there's so many other different benefits to working remotely. But yeah, it, if you're a, a parent I you know I completely understand what you're saying in terms of organizing things so that they make sense and you know if everybody else wants to do it then why not so yeah I'm, I know and I think you know I was talking to somebody else about this the other day about actually it's a real privilege actually being able to work remotely um because you know one of the things that it's really given me is me feeling like I'm more present with my kids I guess so my wife's at home with the with the girls two days a week so two days a week if my diary allows I'll go down and we'll have lunch together and you know there's just that little bit of sneaky bits of extra time that make me feel like 
I'm not leaving in the morning, going to an office and then um, and then coming back uh, just before bedtime every day. And that, you know, that kind of means the world to me at the moment. It's hard, it, it, I get you. Again, we could, we could go off on a tangent here a bit, couldn't we? Because know, yeah. um, it's kind of um, the same thing. I echo the same sentence because like, there was a point where I was working really long hours, long office hours and not getting to see my my little boy and my little girl and it, it's um yeah you want to be present and it's something that's important as a parent it makes you think why don't more people do it why don't more businesses do it but listen let's let's stick with the let's stick with the uh, the script that we've got here um, <laughs> <laughs> shall we um but no it's, it's, it's as i said it's good to have you on here and it's good to to learn a bit more about you to learn a bit more about the business and what you're doing and obviously with any business you can you know that there are challenges that everybody has to overcome in fact not just business but working remotely as well what cha- what are the biggest challenges have been for you and how have you sort of uh, navigated those challenges oh gosh so I think the biggest challenge I've faced so far was making that huge step to do it in the first place it's like walking off a cliff and just <laughs> hope it just hoping that there's a soft landing below it yeah. um you know and and you I felt like I had the experience and I had the support and I had everything that I needed (laughs) all the kind of individual ingredients to go and create a great business but it was still like stepping off a off a huge cliff and hoping for the best but it's worked out hasn't it it's yeah yeah 100% and you know there is I would not look back and um you know anybody else who is thinking about taking that leap of faith I would really encourage you to just go and do it because you know that one of the worst uh, feelings in life is is regret and I, I don't regret a single second of it um but yeah it, it has paid off yeah so I remember in fact when we started talking first of all you were at the point where you were just sort of really pushing it forward right and and now a few months down the line you've it seems like you've got quite far in a short space of time am I am I right yeah it feels like that you know it feels like um we've established a real kind of brand a voice around our brand we've got a fabulous product um you know we're we're really starting to learn more about our sales process and um and what works and you know and what our uh, client pain points are and getting all those good those um fantastic pieces of feedback and the product roadmaps looking great and you know what it, when i look back and i think about what we've achieved in such a really short space of time i actually that is pretty wow even though i do say so myself i'm just gonna pat myself on the back <laughs> that. why not if you don't who will you know <laughs> no it's brilliant it's inspiring i have to say because like you said it's it's never easy starting a business or even something that's new or not not familiar let alone starting a business in, at a point where p- lots of people are probably saying it's probably not a good idea to start a business it's kind of like you're getting the, the negativity as well as that and you've dealt with it so take my hat off to you definitely oh, thank you <laughs> so yeah so you've got your team you've got your business uh, in mm-hmm. place which is brilliant um it hasn't all been plain sailing uh, i'm sure can you tell me about some a recent setback that you've managed to sort of navigate yeah so um so it's a really small thing, but it's the thing that immediately sprang to mind, which was, um, which is, I recently lost a deal that I thought I had in the bag, oh, no. and you know I'd done all the hard graft, we got all the right stuff in place, and and I expected to land this deal, and I and I didn't, um, and you know I don't ex- I didn't expect to win 100% of them it's nice when we do but um you know that I, I expected to land this one and actually it what it what it made me do is really sit down and look at that sales process and I think it's it has made us stronger actually because we we kind of went through and did right so where 
where could we have done better with that why did we lose it why didn't we see it come in you know and um and um and it's really kind of made our our sales process stronger and I think um you know you and I were talking just before uh just before the call about sales not being my natural go-to you know I've, I've had to do the reading and I've had to um learn the science and I've had to write it all down <laughs> Um, so actually that was quite a kind of um, a healthy process for me to to go through to say you know what I've learned so much but actually on on this occasion I didn't have enough and and where can where can we um where can we fill the gaps in yeah and I think it's probably best to learn that at the, at the front end rather than because with me it took me a bit of a time to sort of accept that I needed to take other people on or sort of get help in the areas that I didn't um wasn't so good so I think yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant yeah. but like I said I'm so so happy um in terms of where your business is going and yeah I'll be looking out for for what's going on in the future definitely and you've got your team together as well I take it as well so mm. how is that all going how's things with the team yeah great so um we pulled together um some kind of subject matter experts if you like who are all kind of got a vested interest in in making this business work and it just it just does work um you know we've got we've got ways of communicating we've got a nice rhythm in terms of how we how we touch base with each other how we hold each other to account um you know what we what we update each other on what we celebrate with each other etc so we've kind of really quickly got into got into a really nice rhythm which is great and that rhythm, that communication is, is um, what can I say? It's not, you can't really take that for granted because that's like, I'm not saying that you do, but I'm just saying, generally speaking, when you've got that in a remote team, that's something really special um, because it means that obviously you've got that engagement, but there's lots of people I know who are struggling with that engagement and employee engagement and perhaps they probably don't really know what it, what it means and how to achieve it. And this is where you come in. Victoria tell tell me what what is employee engagement in, from your perspective from the space HR perspective sure so employee engagement from the space HR perspective is where two things come together so it's where the happiness of your team is joined together with alignment to business goals so that is your kind of their your best people bringing your their best selves to work and doing their best selves when they get uh, doing their best work when they get there so you know it's about um a really fabulous well looked after really happy team really aligned to what it is that your business is is um trying to achieve Mm -hmm. and how i mean i'm curious how did you go about achieving that within your own team what what were the steps that you took yeah so i think where it really starts is that total alignment. So all of us absolutely know where we're going. We know what the what um, the really long term goal is. We know what the short term goals are. We know what the steps are over the next weeks and months in order to get there. And that isn't some huge document that we've that we've got with strategy. And it doesn't need to look like that. Although in some businesses that can really help. In our organize in our business. We have got um, goals and strategies written down, Um, but we've also, we all know the story and and we all know the part that we play in achieving it. And we've baked in that really great communication. Everybody gets to contribute. Everybody feels like they've they've got a voice and their voices um, is uh, recognized, you know, I hopefully provide good leadership to that team we make sure that we're checking in with each other from a well-being perspective from a you know fulfilling careers perspective everybody's at that point in their career where this is exactly what they want to be doing um so you know it's it is genuinely all the stuff that I work with with clients that's the that's the stuff that we're doing in our in space HR in our own organization so you're walking the talk basically you're doing you're doing what you suggest other people do but you're doing it in the way that suits your team and space space hr 
Yeah, that's right. So it's things like, you know, and, and you would expect our product is, is based on WhatsApp. So email isn't the way that we communicate, it just isn't. It never has been. You know, I can I probably that. count on... <laughs> kind of <laughs> count on one hand the number of emails that we've sent to each other and it's usually because we forwarded on something that someone else has sent us and you know actually what we get from whatsapp is that kind of instantaneous it's we are able to bake more of our personality in and um you know and we'll send um gifts and emojis and all the rest of it and actually that helps remind us that we are a team and that there are personalities behind it and no matter what a bad day somebody's had or whatever actually it isn't um a terribly formal email um that lands in somebody's inbox it's whatsapp or obviously we talk to each other as well um uh but you know we we just decided really on that the email just wasn't wasn't our bag yeah i i I can mention it well actually I won't mention a few businesses that actually some of my colleagues are telling me that they're receiving so many emails it becomes quite stressful and they you know so that well-being piece that you mentioned in terms of checking in with each other you've just basically factored in something that can make make sense really doesn't it just makes sense that if you if it works for you then why not just do it so love that and I, and I know that lots of um, lots of people who may be listen, who are listening to this may be in a situation where they have recently, well, not recently, but over the last few months, year or year and a half, have got have had to sort of change from being a co-located business or adapt to being a remote business or, you know, latterly, I suppose, hybrid as we come out of this, uh, this uh, whole lockdown. Um, what changes about employee engagement with a remote team in your perspective? Okay. So I think there's there's kind of two sides of this. So I think there's some real benefits from a remote team. You know, one of the things that we um, that we measure and we talk about when I work with organisations is uh, fulfilling roles, and um, within there we talk about that work life balance, um, and we talk about you know whether people um, feel supported in their in being able to achieve a work-life balance. Um, So there's so many gains that you can have through running a remote team. You know, I mentioned my kids, but kids aren't the only caring responsibilities. Some people have got hobbies or just really enjoy, you know, watching Netflix. Maybe Netflix is their hobby or whatever. So, um, you know, I think you can bundle loads more into your kind of um, fulfilling role uh, pot of engagement if you like through um through an engaged team i think the watch outs um for and where employee engagement can shift uh with a remote team are, are in some of the other areas and um, you'll kind of see my eyes dotting around because um, I, I kind of talk through a, a mental employee engagement model that i've got if you like um, a, mm-hmm. um, a physical uh, visible one so you know if you think about connection of the organization it's really important that um if your team is dispersed that everybody still understands the role that they play in that organization they still feel like they have a voice and they are heard in the organization um you know if you think about um kind of those people who are closest to you um when you are maybe in an office you would have more incidental uh interactions with people you know and you but in a remote working place it it kind of is all a bit more purposeful you've got to book in time to talk to somebody or whatever and if you're not careful your kind of circle of influence those people that you talked to on a regular basis in your organization can really shrink down and if you are the leader at the top of that organization really quickly the the people who you get feedback from um or the people who influence you in your role can really shrink if you're Mm -hmm. not careful it's one of the reasons why i really believe in anonymous simply engagement surveys because it it gives out that opportunity for everybody in that organization to to have a 
to have a voice. And it's also, as I say, it's really important that all of those those um, people in your team can kind of answer the question, I understand how I can contribute to the goals of the organisation. And I think you kind of have to over-index on that sometimes in, in a remote team. Leadership becomes really, really important, of course. And, you know, whether your leader can still put, have the skills uh, to pull together a team um, and whether they are, you know, still rewarding and recognising you from afar. And, and some of that can, can um, need more time and attention when you're working in a remote team. As I say, you know, for fulfilling um, roles, there's, there's a massive kind of chunk in um in the work-life balance box, but what about you know career management? Does the, do we are we adding in more time, or are we are we thinking about how we're we're managing remote careers um, that also filled in, uh, feed into engagement? And then last but absolutely not least is is well being. So that's about feeling kind of safe, secure, supported in your working environment. So you know we've we've heard a lot over the last 12, 18 months about mental health and um and the well-being of our teams and that's so important particularly if you know you aren't again you aren't incidentally um bumping into into people whilst making a cup of tea on a tuesday morning um when you can kind of check in on somebody and, and get a feel for it you know that that stuff is important and it needs it might need a bigger plan around it something more purposeful to make sure that you you are um covering that kind of well-being ethos but from afar i was going to say what what are the red flags i mean it, i don't know if you can think of any off the top of your head but are there any red flags to look out for where you which is, i suppose find that the engagement is beginning to sort of crumble or lack like i mean i can think of a couple but are there any that typically that you see within the businesses that you work with yeah so okay so where um you've maybe seen some employee turnover or sickness has got a bit um has crept up a little um covid aside obviously um maybe where um where a leader's inbox is full of um, employees hoping that they'll make a decision for them for example that can be a sign where engagement um, isn't quite where it needs to be um, where salary creep sometimes you can find that you are trying to incentivize people to stabilize them in your in your organization maybe incentivizing them to stay and you know salary salaries crept up and and actually maybe what's at the heart of it is is engagement um whether you maybe find it difficult to find talent in the marketplace that might be because you haven't you unbeknownst don't have a great reputation um out there in the market uh, in the kind of talent marketplace i guess um, I could probably go on and on and on. That's, that's a good few. Yeah, that was a good few. Thank you for those ones. I think that was a good one to look out for. And I think um, you mentioned that you're, you're working with companies doing employee, employee engagement in a different way. Can you tell us how, how that works then and how the, the, the platform that you work on works or work with works? Yeah, of course. So um, what the work that I do with organisations is to understand where they feel like they are from an employee engagement perspective and how a real focus on employee engagement might benefit them at that point in time and how that fits into their wider business goals. So I really kind of get under the skin of an organisation. Then um, we'll look at from an employee, what our platform does is it sends out surveys to to employees via WhatsApp and they they give in um, feedback and that can be on a some of the questions are scaled one to ten and that gives us some data and some of it is written feedback and usually in there there's some really constructive great ideas about how leaders can can improve the organization so I work with organizations to design um, a survey for them we'll understand what feedback would be useful where they want to go searching um, and we'll we'll create a survey 
will then manage them the team through the survey process and then I work with the organizations at the other side to say right so this is the insight that we got this is what your data is telling you let's talk about an action plan and what we're going to do next and then let's talk about how we're really uh, swiftly going to take those next steps back out to your team um, and then um, we do that on a regular basis so um, the usual cadence of a survey um, with the organisations that I work with is quarterly so we ask um, between kind of uh, 10 to 16 questions usually usually levels out about 12 questions and we do that on a really regular basis we might evolve the the survey questions to go and get some different data or we'll build in some hot topics or if there's a project that we're releasing or you know something that they want to test we can do that um but it's about really regularly going out checking in with the team and then just go and doing something with it and really building in that kind of um, credibility into that employee feedback process. And it sounds like you work quite close, although it's a platform, it sounds like you work quite closely with the team. Um, is there a typical business that you work with or is it just generally across the board different types of businesses? Really different. So we've got, um, you know, we've got some organisations who love the tech. We've got some organisations who are using the tech to get it um, to reach employees who don't have email. Um, we've got some organisations who actually the the kind of the ease and the regularity of it really suits their kind of fast changing pace of business. So, you know, we're we're not finding we're fitting into a very specific industry um it's more kind of types of organizations where we can you know we can get them uh feedback for something um that that matches a, a you know the the way that their organization is at that point in time i guess i'm talking about speed uh, what what are your plans then for the for the future i'm quite excited to keep in touch with you to see to see where you're going in the future given the trajectory that you're on at the minute what what are your plans for the future oh well um well, we can have you tell got... me? <laughs> <laughs> well i mean we've got a product roadmap as long as our arm so what we've built is a really great smart solid fabulous um employee feedback um platform really super proud of it it does a fabulous job but then um you know there are kind of spin-off user cases and um and uh other ways that we'd like to that we'd like to start using it you know maybe um my product team are going to uh, keep me here but you know maybe we might want to start to think about um really easy way of doing exit interviews for example um you know and there's other ways that we can go and um we can go and use the tool that we've created feedback to give different insights in, into organizations. Sounds yeah. good. As like I said, I'm really excited because the like I said, the last time I, I spoke to you, you were just there and now you're here. The next thing you know, you'll probably be up there so when you, you're expanding across the, the UK and Europe before you know it. So hopefully um, it's all going to continue going in the right direction. I'm sure it will. Um, it's been really good to have you on the show, Victoria, and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing where you go in the future. Can you tell me um, where can our guests, our audience uh, find uh, Space HR? What's the best place to, to get in touch with you? So you can check me out on LinkedIn um, or uh, have a look at our website, which is www.spacehr.co.uk. And if you are interested in um, employee engagement as a topic, there is um, a blog section on our website that we um, put new material on on a really regular basis and you know you can spend um, spend time going through our through our blog um, telling you everything that you need to know about employee engagement. And there might be another subject to that because I looked at your blog about circle of concern and circle of influence so that might be another potentially another podcast episode but we'll see okay. but yeah <laughs> definitely it's been great having you Victoria on the podcast I wish you all the best in the future and um, no doubt we'll speak again soon. And um, yeah, great to have you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thanks. That's that. Nice one. That's perfect. 
Was it? Good. Do you was, feel like you got some good material there? Definitely. I, I tell you what, I was really nervous. I don't know why. Oh, no, don't t- tell me that. <laughs> that made you nervous. No, not you. I, I, I don't know oh. what. I think, I think because my kids are in the background as well. <laughs> I don't know if you heard them. I keep no, I, d- I didn't. I um, I had to threaten my daughter. She <laughs> did a usual trick of standing at the top of the stairs and shouting mommy at the top of her voice. And I would like, I would, tonight is not the night, Alice. <laughs> yeah, I, d- I don't like it when things don't go smoothly. So maybe that was at the back of my mind when we were recording. But I think it went well, despite all of the, the distraction in the background. And you, like, a, you, I think got all the questions answered. I mean, it was, Good. pretty pretty smooth oh yeah it was very good good uh, oh thank you what i'm going to do is um i'm aiming for towards the end of july um yeah. unless you've got any sort of sort of promotions coming up or immediate no, promotions. I haven't. No. No. So, yeah, end of july um and i mean let me if you could drop me a line with the, the sort of um links that you want me to put in the in the show notes or if there's anything yeah, else that you want me to include in the show notes yeah. and then um i'll drop it in there and what i'll also be doing as well is promoting little, little snippets um across linkedin as well um Brilliant. so yeah um i think we've got everything so that was Aww. really good so, sorry about the the mishap at the the beginning with the, with skype the do not be sorry do not be sorry you were... oh. <laughs> you had a backup plan what more can you ask for that's something um and let i mean let me know if there's anything that i can do to to help out um as you've kindly given your time so let me know and uh oh. let's let's keep in touch